Hey there! So we are here finally to do the review for the ASI 2600 MC Duo. Boop, 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 boop. It is time. Yes. So uh, we're going to go straight to the point. We uh, are going to go ahead and attach the camera right now to the scope and we will image a target tonight from our backyard. Mm. So we'll see if the guider can um, see stars can through the dual band filter. Mm, very exciting. I think this is one of the things that we really wanted to test out, right? Yeah, most people wonder. Here I'm just going to use the provided uh, adapter and uh, if we add it to the reducer, it should be fine. So I'll just Love that sound. In. And we also have a small adapter here uh, which can connect to your telescope just so that it fits. And most importantly, what I'm very, very excited to do is to remove this guider here. So. Once we have this on. Ooh. Very okay. exciting. We can now remove this auto guider and this guide scope. So that's very, very nice. That's one thing that we can remove. One less thing to worry about. And I love that. Should we just burn this out the <laughs> I was window? Talk to you. <laughs> okay, so like we said in the unboxing video, it provided us with two uh, USB 3 cables. And today we're going to be using a short, uh, the short one, because we have the ASI Air here. So we can just connect this cable uh, straight from the camera to the ASI Air. Okay, Good and job. guys, we are now ready to image. I will go ahead and spend the night imaging. Because I'm leaving, but I won't leave you in spirit because I'll be back at the conclusion. Yeah, she decided to go party with her friends instead of staying for the review, so it's I'll be alone tonight. having a social life. <laughs> Goodbye. So I'll be alone tonight. Let's go ahead outside and put this on the mount and see what we can get. So we'll try to see if the camera can guide without issues in two different scenarios. Both times we'll use a dual band filter because a lot of people are afraid it will make finding stars on the guide window challenging. The first night will be at f3.9, so very fast optics, and finding stars should be very easy. On the second night, we will remove our reducer and make our telescope f5.6 instead. These are the only two setups we can try at home, but go watch Nico Carver's review if you'd like to see the camera under more in-depth scenarios, as he did a fantastic job at analyzing results from several setups. So on the home screen of the ASI Air, it's very simple to add the camera. Uh, just make sure to change the scope focal length, uh, especially for the guide scope focal length. So make sure they both match because this is just like an OAG, so it uses the same focal length. And uh, for the guide camera, it will be, for now, the ASI 220 Mini because this is where the sensor comes from. Then make sure you focus your stars before you care about the guide window at all because if your main camera is not focused, then uh, it doesn't matter if you try to focus manually on your guide camera, uh, it's going to mess up later anyway. And once your stars are focused, uh, you can go into the guide window and start taking pictures. I used between two and four second exposures um, just to find stars. And of course, at the very beginning, on your very first time, it's very likely you will not see anything. And that's because you have to first manually focus the guide center. So for this, you have a knob on the side of the camera, and you can see me here uh, using the iPad on my right hand and moving the knob using my left hand uh, while watching the iPad screen. And I have four second exposures, so of course uh, I have to wait four seconds each time to see results. But uh, once you see just a few stars, you can go slower and try to make them as small as possible until they are completely focused. And here you can see the stars uh, being visible now. I changed my exposure time to one second and selected a star to guide on. And now we're guiding. So at f3.9, there were no issues at all finding stars and launching the auto guiding. So I imaged most of the night. I picked a random target area in Cygnus. And here you can see the guide uh, graph. Time lapse, as you can see here, is going from 0.6 to 0.7. My first night was not the best in terms of guiding. Uh, even though it's already very good at 0.7, there was no star trot at all. But I can tell you now, on the next few nights, my guiding was usually 0.4, 0.3 even. Uh, but here on this first night, I guess my polar alignment was not the best. And it 
hovered around 0 0.6, 0 0.7. But yeah, after being done with this video so far, every night has been 0 0.35, 0 0.4, so very good. And in the morning, it was time to uh, get the scope back inside. Uh, I ended up doing two targets, so a random one in Cygnus for just one or two hours, and then I switched to the Wizard Nebula, and both times the stars were all round and pinpoint, so no issues with guiding whatsoever. So I'm now going to remove the reducer so we can go from f3.9 to f5. And here you can see the type of art that our dumb cat likes to make once in a while. It's uh, fantastic, isn't it? Anyway, so let's remove this. And I should still be able to use a filter. So here is the reducer itself. And I can remove this part here. And our filter is right in this part. As you can see here, dual band, narrow band filter. So I'm going to put this reducer away. And now I'm gonna attach this back. We'll just stick this here. All right, so now we are at F5 with a dual band filter and a focal lens of 500. Let's see if the guiding will be just fine again. So at F5.6, I once again had no issue at all finding stars. Uh, as you can see here with the two second exposures, I was able to quickly find stars and start guiding. So once again, no issues. I didn't spend much time on this because I really wanted to um, get one more target with this camera. So I put the reducer back. I went back to f3.9 after testing f5.6. And now this time went on the cave nebula for two nights in a row. And both nights, as you can see here, the guiding was hovering around 0 0.4. So really, really good guiding. And you can see the end result of the cave nebula here. So beautiful object from bottle nine, of course, with a dual band filter and the ASI 2600 Duo. So I really loved the ASI 2600 MC Duo. Um, I did not really go in depth about the specs of the camera in this video because they're pretty much the same as the regular 2600 MC Pro. I think there's only like two or three very slight differences. Um, but overall it's the same camera, which gives you the same results, um, same sensor and everything. So uh, if you have to choose between this one and the regular uh, 2600 MC, I would definitely go with this one. I love not having to use any type of um, guide scope slash uh, OAG. And it's about the same price if you take into consideration how much you will have to spend for a separate guiding uh, solution anyway. So between the two for sure, I'll go with this one, which has the included guiding, which is really fantastic. And I love not having to have one more thing on the scope here. Uh, it's really cool. It makes everything more portable. So um, I will see you guys next time. I will try to review the AM3 next, which I've used uh, for parts of this video and it worked really, really well already. So we'll try to review that one next and we'll see you guys next time. Clear skies.